Welcome back to What RT Noobs with General Disturbance. This is an AMX 105AM Milli 547. It's the Tier 4 French self repel gun and it's on the Westbourne of Airfield. And the commander is Zan Xerox. And battle has started. Now, the AMX 105AM is actually a Tier 4 French SPG. Um, and it's the first typically French RT because it's uh, fast, it's uh, very mobile, um, and it's got a decent gun. It's got a 105mm howitzer. Um, it was actually a, an RT that was developed after the war. Um, I guess the only drawbacks are the uh, length of the reload time, which is 13.81 seconds, which is not too bad. And of course, that uh, unless until you've actually got a full 100% crew, it's fairly inaccurate and takes a long time to dial in the aim. Okay, he's got a target. It's a chaffy. Rounds out. And he gets a kill shot. Or did he? No, the Skoda T24 got the kill. He certainly was an accurate shot right on that chaffy. And we've got another target now. It's a Lux and a Matilda, as well as a Panzer 4H up on Temple Mount. He fires around in, I think, at the Matilda, but it was a little too early. Now he's looking at Battle Assistant now. Should be a lot easier to aim the shots. Okay, he's dialed in on the Panzer 4H. Oh, accurate shot, 135 hit points. Looked like it hit the lower plate, actually. Now, it's a very difficult shot on Temple Mount because you can see he's got a red line, which means that the shell would actually hit the ground uh, at that particular point. Um, so he's adjusting his aim and it looks like he's going to go after the looks. Tier 4 German light tank with a very, very nasty gun. Oh, big hit! 178 hit points. And the looks is taken down immediately afterwards. So he got some damage assistance there because he took out the looks' tracks. And there's that Panzer 4H, tier 5 German medium. Again, he keeps popping up on that ridge line, which makes it a difficult shot. And he's looking around for more targets. The one thing you can say about the AMX 105, it's got a fairly good range. Round out on the Matilda. Oh, we took him out one shot, 205. Well, it's not a one shot total kill, but he did take the uh, kill with one shot from his gun. Because, of course, the Matilda's got a much higher um, uh, hit point total. Uh, so somebody else must have got a shot into that Matilda first. But he fires a quick round in there. No, didn't get any hits. Looking around for a new target to shoot at. Ah, oh, Panzer 4H. He's making a quick dash down to this side. But he's got a red line there. You can see the red line. It's green there. But the moment he pulls back to try and hit that Panzer 4H, it's a red line. But he can hit that Saal 42, which is a tier 4 French medium. Dialing in. Round out. Direct hit! Takes him out for 71 hit points. That's his second kill of the game. He's definitely having a good game. Now most people find the AMX 105 difficult to play. Mostly because of the accuracy, but once you get to a crew with 100%, it becomes a lot more fun. It really is all about getting the crew to 100% so that you can then fire accurately on the enemy. Right, it's firing at the stud, but it's on the corner, and he's not going to get much splash, I'm afraid. Because the splash is only 1.91 meters, so you have to really get a direct hit on the target. He probably would have been better to hit the building and knock the building down. And he does that. Okay, now the Stug's exposed. And the enemy artist has been spotted as well. It's an M37, slightly off to the right. But there's the Stug 3. He's focusing on that for the moment. More dangerous opponent. Yep. Oh, it lands directly behind. The Strodney 39 is going after the M37. And the Stug's turning to try and go after the Strodney. He takes him out. Well, no, the T-34 got the, the Strodney. He's fired a round in at the Stug, but that was hastily aimed and unfortunately it went astray. We saw where the M-37 was headed, but it was headed back towards the cap. And I think that's because there's a Largo just about to enter the cap 
on the other side. A Lago that's on uh, Santerox's team. He's looking for that uh, M37. You should see him very, very shortly. There's the Stug. Unfortunately, the Stug's behind that uh, that rock, so we can't get him at the moment. He's in defilade. But there's the M37. He can hit him. Okay, he's got to work out where to shoot. Fires the round in. Not yet. Now, round out. Direct hit, but no, unfortunately, M37 had been taken out by the Largo before his shell arrived, but it would have taken out that M37 because it went right into the side of the wreck. Okay, he's now looking for the one, the last remaining RT. He's firing into the corner. No, the last remaining RT is a birch gun. That's a British tier four. And there's the T-34 and the SU-76. Well, he can fire at both of them. Just aiming on T-34 now. Round out. Well, it went a little high. It went right over the top of the T-34. But that appeared to be an RT round, not the T-34 round. So I think the Birch Gun is the other side of the T-34. I think he's behind that T-34. Yes, there's definitely an RT there. He's in the bushes. I saw the tracer from the uh, birch gun after the C-34 had fired. He was firing around in. No, didn't hit it that time. But there is a birch gun there, for sure. Now there's four enemy remaining and four on his team. Two RT on his team, two tank destroyers. I'm certain that birch gun is still there. He just probably aimed a bit short. No, nope, he's leaving it. And there's the SU-76. The Hetz is going up behind. I think the SU-76 is going after the Hetzer. Now the Hetz is in defilade from the birch guns, so the birch gun can't touch him at the moment. Oh, he just, they just took out the, S the Sav M43. There's the Birch Gun. He did come down from the heights, but the Hetzer derps him, and he's out of the game. So there's only two enemies remaining, an SU-76 GFT and the T-34. And there's the T-34, and he's going after the Hetzer. Oh, and the Hetzer's turned the other way. Uh, T-34, I think that was fired a bit too soon. Yeah, he's pulling back down that uh, that cliff. Or pulling down that road, rather. I think he's going to come around the corner and try and hit the Hetzer. The Hetzer's backing up. Lastly, he's pointing in the right direction, but now the SU-76 is coming to play. So now, San Xerox fires in. The SU-76 took out the Hetzer. We know the T-34 is nearby. It's three against two now. Right, the Marder 38T is going to have to be the eyes and ears of the of his team. But um, it looks to me like San Xerox is actually going to take matters into his own hands, use the mobility of the AMX 105 AM, and head down to the other end of the map. So he's going to spot for himself. His teammate in the M37 is staying behind. And I think that's mainly because he's actually inexperienced. But San Xerox is an experienced RT player, so he knows what to do and unfortunately we just lost the Marder and so it was a good decision for San Xerox to make to come down this way because it's now two versus two and the enemy has the advantage because they've got a medium tank and a tank destroyer they've got the advantage of view range and of course reload time but it cannot be uh, understated the fact that San Xerox has got a 105 millimeter howitzer as his main armament Locks on. Oh, and derps the T-34. He didn't even actually lock on. He, he actually just did a drive-by on him and took him out that way. But now he has to go elsewhere because the enemy uh, SU-76 will know where he is from when he took that T-34 out. So he has to pick another route to come into the enemy cap. Now, hopefully, his teammate in the M-37 
will be aware that uh, he should be looking ahead of where San Sirox is driving to aim ahead just in case the enemy is seen. Now, he, that, those targeting signals there actually tell San Sirox that that's where the M37 was looking. But he should be looking ahead. There's the SU-76. Okay, get behind the wreck. Shoot over the wreck at the SU-76. His teammate in the M37 will now be aiming. Hopefully he'll be able to put some rounds in. We're looking for the RT rounds to come down. San Xerox is going in for the uh, shotgun kill. Oh, took a big hit there from the SU-76. But he derps him right in the face. 165 hit points and wins the game with only one hit point remaining on his RT. And the M37 says, oh my god. Well, yes, you should say, oh my god. To win the battle that way is pretty astonishing. So well done. Congratulations there to Zan Xerox. That was pretty amazing, the end. So let's have a look at the uh, end of battle stats. And it's an ace tanker for Zan Xerox in the AMX 105 AM Milli 47. He also managed to get a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. He got six. He got a duelist medal for taking out two enemy tanks that uh, did damage to him during the battle. And he also managed to get a fighter badge for taking out at least four of the enemy. And that's exactly what he got. But the more astonishing thing is he also picked up a Starks medal. And the Starks, to get it, you actually have to take out at least two enemy, survive at least two hits that are blocked or do damage to your vehicle. And you have to lose at least two thirds of the hit points of your vehicle um, in order to obtain um, a Starks medal and survive the battle. That's the most important thing of all. Um, and that's very difficult to lose that much hit points, to take those many hits, to get those many kills and still survive. Uh, and so congratulations on getting a Starks. Um, if we have a look at the, uh, the team scores, well, highest amount of damage, 831 hit points. He now only beat the M7, who got 789, and the SU-85B, who got 749. But he got the highest number of kills in the battle, four. And the M37 was no slouch either. He managed to get three kills of 474 hit points. So he wasn't quite the noob that everyone thinks he was. Um, his stats may say he's a noob, but he's actually an experienced RT player. Because to get three kills in M37, you've got to be pretty good. And of course, uh, when it came to base XP, the M37... The M7 managed to get the highest score with 624. And uh, Xerox got the second highest score with 615. And that M37 came a little way down the table with 424. So if we have a look at the detailed report, he fired 23 rounds during that battle. He got six direct hits, six penetrations, and two splash damage. Did damage of 831 hit points, of which 589 were at more than 300 meters. So Obviously, the hit on the T-34 and the SU-76G was a very, very close indeed. Point blank range. He received two hits. Uh, one penetration, one non-penetration. Uh, obviously, the hit that was penetration was from the SU-76. It was right in the face. And the non-penetration round was from the T-34. Uh, he was very lucky to survive. He, was, he hit six of the enemy, damaged six of the enemy, but killed four of them. And he also managed to get damage assistance of 51 hit points when he hit that Lux and tracked him. And the Lux was then taken out. On a premium account, San Xerox earned 20,022 credits. Got 10,000 credits for a personal mission payout. And after repair and ammunition resupply, he still took away 24,416 credits. He received 923 XP. Got times two for the first victory of the day. And a personal missions payout of 462, meaning his grand total came to 2,308 experience points altogether. Um, and as his title says at the, at the end, it says, What RT Noobs? You just have to do it yourself. And that's the thing. The members of What RT Noobs have got a lot of courage. They will go out there and do it themselves if they have to. If the, all the other members of their team die off, they will go out there and they will take the enemy on face to face. We don't suicide. We never surrender. We go after the enemy and we win. And San Xerox has just epitomized exactly what, what RT Noobs members do. They go out there and they win the battle if they have to single handed. And in this, in this case, it was single handed because he took those two enemy tanks on and blew them away with a shotgun to the face. 
So congratulations on Xerox. Great battle. Really enjoyed that one. Uh, if you enjoyed this battle, please give it a like and do subscribe to our channel. And hopefully it'll be your replay that I'll be featuring in the next video.